So I thought I'd talk a little bit about the coherer detectors. They've uh, they've been around a long time. Back in the 1860s, mid mid 1860s, they were first fooling around with them, and I think it was by 1894 thereabouts the term coherer was actually associated with a device. But what we're talking about is uh, radio control. It's a device that can sense uh, a magnetic spark or an electrical spark. It'll uh, cause uh, metal filings within, usually within a tube, to conduct. And then if you physically shape or shake or tap the tube, it breaks that conduction until the next spark comes along. For our tests, this is a small coherer device that I made, and it's filled with... Um, I believe this one has nickel filings in. See that or tin? I can't. No, this one has tin filings in it. Which I basically just took a file and took some rosinless solder. You can get solder that has no core, coreless they call it. And I have a three volt battery pack off camera. You can't see, but basically I'm just running the batteries. It's wired in like a switch through the LEDs back to the battery. So if this were to conduct, or if I were to short those two wires together right there, the LED should come on. To uh, generate a spark, I'm just going to use a barbecue igniter. That's all this is. It has a little antenna attached to it. And you can see when it detected the spark, this LED came on. To turn it off, you just physically have to tap it to shake them up again to get them to uncohere. So that's the basic action. There were um, a range of toys made in the 50s and the 60s called Radicon. They made a Radicon robot, they made a Radicon boat, a Radicon car, a Radicon bus. And inside those, this is what's left of one of the actual cohere tubes from one of those toys. The glass is, has broken, and I'll show you the, the metal that was in there, the filings that were in there. But what there is, is in this brass cup, one of those two wires that you're seeing is soldered. It does not touch the other end. And on this brass cup, there's a wire soldered which runs over it but does not touch that one. So basically it's two wires running parallel that don't touch each other. And these two brass cups became a place where they could solder wires on. The glass tube held all the metal filings in there and it was only about three quarters full. They put um, a red piece of plastic on all of them to indicate where top was when they were building the devices so they could align them so they could have re reliability. and. Um, does the same thing. Once it, uh, an antenna comes down, a single one and a half volt battery circuit feeds this. Then they went to a, um, a meter relay, like I've already done a video on. It looked very much like this because they needed something very sensitive, and the meter relay then, then triggered a, a motor servo system within the robot. Um, here's one that I made just took a glass fuse apart and I should have used a shorter fuse but it is basically what you saw on there I soldered a wire to one cap, soldered a wire to the other cap put my slid one cap in and, and glued it then uh, slid the other cap in and, and glued it and the two wires again are parallel and this one works kind of okay it's being as long as it is it, it tends to want to conduct even when there isn't an RF from time to time so that makes it not quite reliable and you should have shortened it to get better response out of it. This one's built like a lot of the ones that you'll see on the internet and YouTube and it's not very sensitive and they don't work very well where they just have a plate on one end and a plate on the other and the metal filings are in between the two and you can make them much shorter or longer and by adjusting the plate you can adjust how tight the pack is of the filings. Um, nowhere near as sensitive as the ones that uh, were used in the toys that were successful like that and um, in the toys well here before I move these too far away here is the actual little filings that were in that 1958 Radicon robot tube that you were just looking at and I can't tell you for sure what type of material they are it's very granular looking it's not magnetic so it might be aluminum but I don't really have any way of knowing um, I'm going to move this stuff out of the way and show you how I reset. Within the toys that were made, they actually had a, a hammer 
when the servo motor run a little hammer come wrong and actually hit the platform that the tube was on to reset it. In the, the toys that I'm making, because um, you, you can see my videos on building the dual drive base, my videos on how to build this electromagnetic sequencer. The motor that runs the sequencing cam on the bottom, I have put another cam in there. See that orange cam down there? It turns around. This is a courier tube here and pushes this out slowly and then when it uh, reaches the end of the cam it slams it back. So that is what resets the whole thing. Uh, don't know. Let's see. I haven't tried this. Let's see if we can run this thing. So we'll uh, we'll pretend that there was a signal and we'll see if there's some way I can get the camera angle where you can see what's going on. There, did you see it click it? See how it moves it out and then you hear that snap? That's when it comes back. Is this better in this angle maybe? There, I think you can see the cam as it comes around. So that, uh, that hitting of it is what will reset the the device so it's ready for the next signal. In, in operation what happens is the RF is detected by this. This goes up and turns on the sensitive relay whether it's um, a read relay or that meter relay doesn't matter and then that meter relay or read relay turns on this motor and of course this micro switch normally stops it here but it bypasses that and runs it so once this starts to move now the switch is released. It's going to continue running because of this switch. This gets pinged and reset. This comes back around and stops. So that's that's how the toy works. I'll do a separate video on, on the Radicon robot build that I've uh, 3D printed. And because I don't do editing in my videos, I'd rather spend my time bringing you content than spend my time editing. So I thought I would just cover the, the coherer tube and the basic application that I've got it set up in uh, for my toy.